So here we have recursion 1 str copies. Given a string and a non-empty substring sub, compute recursively if at least n copies of sub appear in the string somewhere, possibly with overlapping. n will be non-negative, of course. So here, let's go over the sample cases. So cat appears two times in the string, which and two is at least two. So we will return true. Here, cal appears once. Of course, one is less than two, so we will return false. And here, cal appears once, but now the um, n is one, so we will return true because one is at least one. Um, so how will we compute this recursively? So one way we can compute this is by um, always looking out for occurrences of this sub. If we do have an appearance of the sub, then we will take one from the n because we already have found an occurrence, and then we will iterate through to the next character in str. Um, yeah, and then also one thing to note is that it says possibly with overlapping, unlike the previous question, which was str count. Because there is overlapping, we do not need to skip the entire string. For example, here, since we have found cat, we do not need to skip at. We can still use atc um, as this is allowed to be a part of a string. Of course, in this case, it is not atc is not cat, but um, theoretically, it is possible that we will consider it and we will consider this. Okay, so let's go over another case. So here, our case will be a, b, c, d, e, f, a, b, c, our sub being a, b, c, and our n being 3. So here, um, yeah, so here for, um, we will have a, b, c. So the first three characters, the length of sub is 3, so we will be checking the first three characters. So the first three characters is a, b, c, and a, b, c is, is of course, a, b, c. So then we will continue on. Um, yeah, so we will continue on to the next part of the string, which is b, c, d, e, f, a, b, c. So we're just iterating through. We, of course, keep sub as a, b, c, but now our n will be 2. Uh, because we have found one occurrence of a, b, c, now we just need to check n minus 1 occurrences of a, b, c in the rest of the string. Okay, so now we have this case. Um, again, we try the first three characters, B, C, D. B, C, D is, of course, not equal to A, B, C. So um, we will just move on without doing anything to sub or N. Um, N, of course, is not changed because we do not find an A, B, C. So now we have this case. Again, we check the first three characters, C, D, E. C, D, E is not equal to A, B, C. So we just move on to the next. So now we have DEF, ABC. DEF is not equal to ABC, so we move on to the next again. Uh, the first three characters are EFA. EFA is not equal to ABC, so again we move on. Again, FAB is not equal to ABC, so we move on. So now we have ABC, ABC, and 2. The first three letters, characters are ABC, and ABC does equal ABC. So now, just like this case from before, we will um, move on to the rest of the string. Having decremented n. So now we have bc, abc, and 1. Here, the length of this is less than the length of sub. Because this is true, that means that this can never appear once more in this string because it simply cannot fit in there. <clears throat> However, our n is still greater than 0. There are 0 occurrences of sub here, but for the rest of this to be true, there must be 1 occurrence of abc in here. This simply does not work, right? So we will just return false. Um, so I hope that's clear. What we're doing is we're just, um, because this we're returning Boolean, we're just narrowing it down and decrementing n whenever we can. At a certain point, we cannot um, check for any more occurrences of sub 
and we will have an n value left. If the n value equals zero, that mean or is negative, that means that there were um, at least n copies of that sub in that entire string from before, so we will return true. If this is not true, then we can return false because there can be no more occurrences, and if these occurrences are left and are needed to be there uh, for there to be at least n copies, then we know that we can just return false. So I hope that made sense. Please pause the video um, if you're confused about something and just think about it. I think it's pretty straightforward, so yeah, the logic will be clear if you just think about it a little. Um, so yeah, so let's first check if the length of the sub is greater than the length of the str, then we know that there cannot be any more occurrences of sub and str. Um, after that, we will check if n is less than or equal to zero. If this is true, that means there were at least n copies of sub that appeared in the entire string. Hence, we can return true. Else, n will be positive. If n is positive, that means that we need to have n, um, that amount of copies more of sub for the entire recurrence to be labeled true. Uh, because this cannot happen, we return false. Now, we will check. Um, so we will first take the first sub length characters in str. If this string equals sub, we will move on with the rest of the currents. Um, like so, and decrement n. Else, we will again move on with the rest of the recurrence, but we will not decrement n because we did not find sub. And there it is, it works.